The evolution of the robust Australopithecines is an interesting story, and it's one to some degree we've already started talking about. Specimens such as this one, SK48 from Swartkrans, come from similar areas as some of the grass owl Australopithecines, Australopithecus africanus, that we've already talked about. But the story of the robust Australopithecines is a story of big teeth getting bigger. Now we've already talked about how the origin of the hominins, like afarensis, correspond with expanding molar size and increasing enamel molar thickness. Now, by the time we get to about two and a half million years ago, the age of the black skull that we just talked about, we begin seeing a divergence, where we still have large toothed molars, or large molar teeth, but we also begin to get even larger. So we refer to gracile and robust Australopithecines to differentiate these two lineages, those who have merely large molar teeth versus those who have really or hyper robust molar teeth. Now, if we look at SK48 again, if we look at the molar teeth, we can see that it has very large molar teeth. But by the time we look at these East African lineages, specimens such as those we see here, represented by Australopithecus boisei, we can see that the size of those molars gets even larger. These teeth are almost the size of a very large coin, like a nickel or even a quarter in some cases, in terms of the overall surface area of these teeth. These are very large dentition, hyper-robust in other words. If we look at the jaws that correspond to these specimens, we can see that not only are the teeth very large, including the premolars, which are larger than some of the molars we've seen in afarensis, but the jaw itself, the corpus, the ramus structures, are also very large. Here's a specimen from Tanzania that demonstrates that very clearly, where you have a big, thick, uh, ascending ramus of the mandible, but then a huge robust corpus that almost develops a circularity to actually the cross-sectional area of it. So it's a big, robust, fat jaw. So the question we have for the robust Australopithecines are why do these traits begin to appear? Why do we have this divergence between a lineage that continues the gracile lineage and maybe continues into specimens such as Australopithecus sediba, and maybe even gives rise to the genus Homo, and this lineage, which is characterized by these increasing masticatory apparatus? These huge jaws corresponding with huge temporalis muscles corresponding with an overall huge chewing structure. Why did these structures exist? And do the specimens we see in South Africa correspond to those we see in East Africa? Are they the same species? Are they different species? What is their temporal position relative to one another? And what can they tell us about the evolution of our genus, the genus Homo, the story we're really interested in? So these are the issues we'll explore this week, talking about the evolution of a lineage that died out, the evolution of an extinct lineage, the robust Australopithecines.